Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Zeno here, and today we're going to be dis discussing the Scion. But not my Scion, not the Brutus's lead sprinkler Scion, nah no, fam. We're, we had enough of that. I'm taking a break from Brutus's lead sprinkler. I've done nine, or technically ten of the classes. I've died on three of them, I just died on my Slayer. I was about to release a YouTube video on him, but I've died to Corrupting Blood, or as his theme would call it, Desync. With that said, uh, this is one of the two intermission builds I've been planning on doing during my uh, Brutus's Lead Sprinkler breaks. These are my intermissions. I'm also going to be doing a Kingmaker challenge later in the league, but for now, BLS, you're on hold for one character. I want to get at least one of these done. So with Brutus's Lead Sprinkler, I, every seven classes, I run it back, and I will start running the classes again. Hi, Oscar. So once I've played Shadow, Scion, Ranger, etc., once I've played all seven of them, I have to play all seven of them again. So I'm coming up again on the Ascendant, and instead of making another Brutus's Lead Sprinkler Ascendant build, I want to test Hiri's Demise. Because I've had great success with making all these Ascendancies with this one weapon, next league I'm thinking about doing it with Hiri's Demise. So to test it, we're going to do it on the Ascendant this league, which is my strongest BLS build. So Hiri's Demise can give you... Uh, let's hold Alt here. It is... Here we go. It's 15 to 30 all attributes. So that's the first thing. It is another attribute gimmick uh, item, but you could choose any bow you want. So next league, if I do run this, we get to have 19 ascendancies all wearing this quiver, but they get to choose the bow they want that is based for their, their build. So it's going to be a bit more broad. Instead of being stuck with this mace, we're stuck with a bow, but the bow of our choosing. Also, it is another stat gimmick. For every one to two cold damage, you get ten. De uh, for every ten decks, you get one to two cold damage. Excuse me. For every ten strength, you get one to two fire damage, and for every ten, you get zero to three lightning damage. So by getting any ten of any attribute, you get rewarded with elemental damage. So this is this can be used with any bow. The first one that comes to mind for any ranger type class would be let's go to poeaffix.net. If you go here to bow, uh, shaper mod. You can get three to five damage to per ten decks. So three to five damage per ten decks. You can actually craft a bow, and then you can actually stack dexterity. If you had three to five and one to two, it's four to seven per ten decks, which is the exact same ratio as fire damage to strength it is now cold damage to decks. If you wear Shaper's Touch, the gloves will give you uh, dex equals life. So you can always run Shaper's Touch. And uh, I'm, I'm considering maybe doing this on the Ascendant, but the one I have theory crafted right now uh, will be a little bit different. Let's see. So Shaper's Touch makes it so you get life for Dex. And you also get accuracy um, for Int, I believe. Accuracy for Int. So getting Int is not bad. It gives us lightning damage. And then Strength. Let's see. Strength gives us mana. So there you, and then you get evasion from int. So it makes it so all of your stats just give you more of the same, just in a different way. Shaper's Touch is really strong with this. <clears throat> the bow I plan on to use with Harry's Ire, well, I'm going to try and make an, an effective meme build. So if you stack stats, you get attributes for your stats. And with Doomfletch's Prism, you get flat fizz. You get a random element based off of that fizz. So... When you shoot, sometimes it's fire, sometimes it's cold, sometimes it's lightning. You get 100% of that flat phase as a random element. And then I'm going to use elemental hit, which decides a random elemental damage on hit. So you have a 33% chance to deal fire, cold, or lightning. And then you have a 33% chance that you're physical to deal fire, cold, or lightning. And then Hiri's Ire is going to give you fire, cold, and lightning based on your stats. So it's supposed to be a completely like, you just roll dice and you get a bunch of elemental damage smacks them in the face. So that's the meme, an effective meme build. Uh, what I think I'm going to do to push this to make sure it can work in maps is we are going to get Shroud, uh, Shroud of the Lightless. This is probably the, this is the best chest for this build. Shroud of the Lightless here gives us level 30 or level 20 elemental pen which is level which gives 37 fire cold and lightning penetration all three of those and with pure talent you get 25 attributes that's damage for heres you get base crit if you're connected to shadow you get five pen if you're connected to templar so five global ellie pen wise oak if you can manage to get nothing but all res you win 
So that's my plan. I wonder if I can actually make a build that only has all res. So Wise Oak gets 100%. Let's see if we could do that. So I already have the theory going. What would we choose for Ascendant? Partially, I'm, I'm kind of siding with Raider because having permanent Onslaught and Frenzy Charges is huge. And I'm kind of siding with Chieftain for more strength percent. It's not bad. It does scale an attribute. But maybe I could try Elementalist and get 10 pen. Let's see. You get Shock at one point. You always get a 1.1 multiplier with Shock. Can summon one additional Golem. That's not bad. Increased effect of Herald. So Herald of Lightning and... Hmm. I can run Herald of, of Thunder and Herald of Ice with this. Cannot take Reflected Elemental Damage. That's good. Or Map... We can do Map Reflect. 10 Pen. I might consider doing this and then going Lightning Cold because Harry's Ire would give us Lightning for this and Cold for this. Get Pen and then get Frenzy. Yeah, let's do this. Screw Chieftain. We've played enough Strength this league. So could I go ES with this? Or could I go Mind Over Matter? Okay, let's see now. Um, if I go Mind Over Matter, we could go Crit. Okay, so that's how I could start. That's not bad. Let me see how effective we could get mine over. Remember, every single one of these is cold damage, fire damage, lightning damage for int. This is a great pathing. Keep the dex. Dex is fine. We're going shaper's touch. Dex is okay. Every point of dex we get is OP. Anything that has two stats is overpowered for this build. Okay, this is good. That's good. All right. Do we need to convert anything? No. We get that. We're going Shaper's Touch eventually. And we get this. Okay, that's good shit. Let's come up here. We get permanent Frenzy Charges. We'll take the Evasion for Frenzy Charge. Accuracy is needed. It also has 20 dex. Okay, crit. Lion Eyes for this. So this would be good if we put Lion Eyes in here. Does it get the other one? It does get this wheel. Poison on hit is not good for me. But this wheel is. And then I could get Pierce. Perhaps that's too much. We get a Frenzy Charge out of it, so it's not terrible. Uh, this is pretty good too. So, hmm. Is it worth it for Lion Eyes in here to get all this crit and crit multi? Probably. Let's drop that. Let me see if I could do this. Physical damage and crit. Is it ethical for me to... Yes, this is fine. I'm going Ellie hit. We need mana. Okay, so I could go EO. If I go EO, I could get a lot more defensive. Let me see here. This is fine because it gives good stuff. Let me see. I'm going way too many points in, I'm aware. It's better to go with that. Okay, so let's see here. If we go this way, we can not go crit. So this one we would go this way and not do anything to do with crit. Not have anything to do with crit. We go mind over matter variant and we now we go elemental overload. That's still good. All right, so let's drop all things crit. We still keep evasion. We could drop this now. That's not as effective because we're not going crit. This is still worth it. We do need incidental crit because it has a lot of stat points. This has dex and int. So alone, that's worth it. And then movement speed, incidental crit is good. You know, you need some still. So this crit is not worth it. Is this crit worth it? Probably not. Just stick with this. We can pick up that, maybe. This is fine because dex. I could craft one of those bows late game too. All right, so where does pure talent give us? So we need to go here. Is it worth it for me to go into this mess? To go ham into this mess? It's pretty good. You get melee attacks, but you get you get attack speed, you get int and strength, you get a lot of elemental damage, all res, wed, you get stats galore. Hmm, this has got to go. That's two points of nothing. This is a point of nothing. Frenzy Charge is okay because we could permanently keep them up as Raider. We could do this and drop the Accuracy node. 
because <clears throat> I'm picking up accuracy here. This has movement speed, attack speed. I get a lot of points too. All right, so this is looking good. What are my stats? 360 dex, 305 in, 190 strength. So that is a lot of elemental damage. We're not gonna convert shit. We're just gonna ride it as is. I could make it so strength is dex or int is dex. That's a cheap ass jewel. But I like keeping my int as int. If I put strength to int in here, let's see how much we would get. One, two, three, four, five, six, plus 24. It's not really worth it. Might as well just keep it as strength as life and fire damage. We could enhance it. As the Ascendant, we do get extra points. So let's see what else we would do. Would I do Path of? What do I get for getting Path of the Witch? I get Mana Regen from Pure Talent and two Int Nodes. What do I get from Path of the Ranger? I get Pathing Points. So we don't have to spend unnecessary Pathing Points. So through all technicalities, I don't need, we don't even have to touch Shadow, essentially. We can just cut Shadow from this. Okay, that's actually kind of huge. That's really huge. <clears throat> that means I can invest into more things like this. The cutting out shadow is massive. This right here is movement speed. Yeah, this is where we're going to go. We're going to take it this way. Um, I'd rather the leech. So let's see. I do need accuracy even though I'm going EO. So we do that. And that has 20 strength and damage. We can do something like that. Jewel here too. This is 1% attack leech. Should I even invest into that? Hi Oscar. Can you not stand on my mouse? Yeah, pure talent is absurd. It's so freaking strong. All right, let's see where we're at now for attributes. So we got more decks. We lost a little bit of int. That's okay, and we gained some strength because we went to duelist. So getting more decks is fine. I get more damage too because movement speed. Let's see, we get 9% movement speed here with some damage. I don't have the bow wheel. Like, I don't have any of the bow wheel. This is pretty absurd for my build, which makes this pretty juicy. Huh. Is it worth it for the bow node? There's a lot of attack speed in here. And 12 plus 12, there's 24% attack speed in here, but I have to spend a lot of points for it. I'd rather just get pen and wed. All right, so let's see now. This right here is absolutely worth it. These are worth it too, if I can just scoop them up. This is down here. You got my. You got my. This is more points than these. This is way better than these two. These are worth it because I've already spent the points. These are absolutely worth it. So what do we use for our reserves here? So I get three passive points for choosing path of. So I get five passive points in total. One, two, three, and then five. So 128 would be ethical. And we, we kill all the bandits. Oscar, you better go. You're in front of the freaking monitor. Let's go. Now I'm not going crit cosmic, I'm going non-crit EO, so I could pull off more stunts and more gimmicks. This is literally the entire tree. I have path the, in, like, I avoid Marauder and I avoid Shadow, but I have Duelist, Ranger, Witch, Templar, and Scion. So I have five classes right here. If I can spend two more points, for pure talent and drop two more points somewhere else. It's hard for me to keep this tree. Every time I want to cut, it's right there. I'd rather get the uh, 1% attack leech with this attack speed and accuracy. I will need some accuracy. This is pen From Pure Talent. Oh yeah, I keep so I'm talking about Pure Talent. If you haven't seen any of my YouTube videos and this is the first one you've ever come across, how's it going? 
I like to do theory craft guides online, and then I like to actually play the build and showcase it. I'm more known for theory crafting. I say in Path of Exile, there's three ways to play the game. You could theory it out, you can play the game, and you can do the economy. So everyone's got their poison. Theory crafting is the one I enjoy the most. Then playing, then economy. But I could do all three. So this guy is really verbose. It's got so much shit. But while your passive tree connects to the uh, connects to a starting location, you get something. It's hard. This is worded horribly. Whoever inputted it, I have it right here. So pure talent. When it's connected to one of the starting classes tree, you get, unlock the buff that is present. It's not if you are this class, you get this buff. Whoever thought that clearly does not know how to read, and if you're that person, go like this. Read. Path of Exile, you must read. If you don't read, you only hurt it yourself, man. While your passive uh, skill tree connects to a class's starting location, you gain. So for in this instance, I'm connected to the Templar tree right here. This node becomes 5 Ellie Pen, and with Brutus's Lead Sprinkler, 20 Strength, Life Mana Regen, 20, and 5 Ellie Pen, and Life Mana is well worth my 4 points. Connected to the Scion tree, which I am, I get 25 all attributes. Connected to the Duelist start, strength, strength, uh, life, a little bit of damage, I get 1% attack leech. I've unlocked up to 6 of these on one character, excuse me, 5, almost 6 on one of them. It's absurd, the stuff that you get. Witch, you get mana regen, uh, shadow, you get base crit, ranger, you get movement speed, duelist, you get leech, marauder gets melee area of effect, so wider area of effect on your melee skills. Templar gets pen, it's just so good. So in this build, let's see what I have. I have scion, which will be 25 attributes. Remember, we're using Hiri's demise. Where is that son of a gun? So we got Hiri's demise, 25 attributes, gives us damage to all three. So that's pretty strong. Uh, what else do we have? We have Templar, which is 5 pen, elemental damage, mana. We're playing Mind Over Matter, matter so that's good. 2 Int Nodes, which is lightning damage with Hiri's Demise. Let's see, we're connected to Ranger, which gives us movement speed. And we're connected to Duelist, which will give us Leech. Accuracy, attack speed, you can't ever have enough attack speed in these builds. You could connect here if you want, but I don't think it's worth it. And base crit, we're not going a full crit build, we're going EO. And we don't need melee AoE because we're not melee. We're using Doomfletch's Prism. So let's let's go through this roundabout again. So Doomfletch's Prism will give us 100% of our weapon physical damage as extra elemental damage, which means this Hiri's damage will not get scaled properly from Doomfletch's Prism. However, because I gain 100% of it, uh, my physical damage as an extra element. Hatred's really strong, and you could still convert this. So if you could find a way to convert this damage over, good stuff. So elemental hit gives us pure a random element chosen on choose on hit. Uh, if there was a wild strike, if this also converted the physical damage, it'd be pretty good. And I think that's a, a solid fixed elemental hit. It also converts your element at your physical as a random element. It should do that. It should do the wild strike. One hundred percent of your physical is converted on top of this. I think it'd be awesome, but it doesn't. So I have to find a way to convert. So that is something I need to think of. We have this right here, which is 40% conversion. I could buy a quiver with a conversion roll. We can get a hero's demise with one. Kind of want to divine this, but I'm on the high end already. It's, let's see, attributes are 15 to 30. Actually, I'm on a low end. All right, let's buy... Should I buy a Divine and then slam this and then be horribly saddened? No, let's just slam it. Okay, Lightning Leash's life is not terrible. So that's not so bad. We could get Conversion on a Quiver. So you can get up to 20% Converted on a Quiver. I could find another 40. We could use Physical to Lightning, but now that's not scaling our, our Elemental Damage. So Wet is a Mandatory. Weapon elemental damage is 100% mandatory. What else is good? We're going to use Ellie Pen from... What's it called? Shroud of the Lightless. So Shroud of the Lightless. Wed. Faster attacks. Elemental hit. GMP. One more. Ellie Focus gets rid of Shock and Freeze. That's bad. 
attack damage full life is hard to pull off. Hmm. Hmm. Ice bite. Ice bite. Ice bite will give us more elemental, more flat cold, but doesn't scale the fizz. So that's chance to bleed. Chance to bleed gets used. That's what we're gonna use. So chance to bleed, faster attacks, Ellie pen, wed, elemental hit, GMP. Chance to bleed. Hmm. Yep, we're gonna go avian. Well, eight. So we could just use this. This chest piece is absurd. You get 10% reduced mana reserve and 75 attributes up to. And then you get the avian's might in flight is doubled. Avian's might gives you the uh, chance to deal double damage. So I have a what? It's 10% normally. No, it's 20% chance to deal double damage. So I could run this if we play CI. Is it possible for me to play CI? Well, we can't run this. We're going freaking Shroud of the Lightless. Weep! Shroud of the Lightless is still better. I'd rather have Ellie Pen over attributes. So I guess we're going to have to go Avian Gloves. Let's see Avian Gloves. Uh, Avian Gloves POE. So Qualls wins. Life. Uh, so you get Duration. Cold damage while you have Avian's Might. Lightning damage while you have Avian's Might. Holy shit. That's insane. That's a lot of flat damage. But it does have life. But doesn't give you the Herald. Doesn't give you it. Yeah, you can have up to 75 all attributes on this. This is insane for... If you were to go like... Null's Inclination. Mind over Matter. Yup. Null's Inclination, Mind over Matter. Hero's Demise. That's how I play the Necromancer. Or mine, you can go CI, no inclination with this. Low life. No CI. You go CI with it. If you're a trickster with this, running minions or guardian, necromancer, no inclination spawns minions. All the attributes gives you damage. So remember, you get to choose the bow. So for the first one, I want to try Doom Fletch's Prism. Wind Ripper is probably the strongest for this build. Like, what other bows could we make? Could I find a thicket bow? So we don't have to go Doom Fletch's Prison. I wanted to go full elemental hit, no meme. I have never made a non-meme. Actually, I made one non-meme meme elemental hit wander, and it was okay. But I think I could pull it off with this, because it's just going to get carried by all this other shit. Okay, let's go with... Uh, Shaper Bow. So let's say like a Thicket would probably be best. Whoops. Damn, girl, you Thicket. Thicket Bow, Shaper. Shaped, yes. Let's see what we got in hardcore. Alrighty. I'm looking for that 3 to 5. Because if it exists, I'm buying it. It's 10? Oh, you can roll 10 on a shaper? Get the fuck? I forgot about that. Power charge on crit strike? What is this? We gotta look for the cold damage. I know someone's gonna have it. Whoa, what is that thing? Holy fuck, that thing is good. Jesus. A 1.7400 DPS thicket bow with movement speed. Jeez. Onslaught and kill, interesting. Man, I love, this is my favorite thing about theory crafting is when you find like that one steal. Let's see if we could do it. I'm not specifically going to search for it because there might be a better one. Some people just throw them up and hope it sells because they're unaware of what it can roll. So you just have to be patient. In hardcore, it's great too because you're not sitting there all day. There's a lot of good shit. Let's see. Haven't seen it yet. Deal double damage. Here it is. Pierce's additional target bleeding dex. I mean, it's not bad that it has dex. It has cold damage too. And it has pierce. It has open prefix. Does it have attack speed? This is suffix, suffix, suffix. Unless, of course, I am wrong. No, this is prefix, actually. Where is my POE affix? 
Okay, so that's prefix. Dex we know is suffix. What else is there? Let me just slide this on over so I can compare. So prefix, suffix, what's pierce? Pierce I think is suffix. Pierce additional target, that's a prefix. Dex is a suffix. Uh, bleed is a suffix, right? Yeah, bleed is a suffix. And then prefix, suffix, suffix, prefix, suffix. Fuck. So I can't put attack speed unless I null this off. I could put wet on it. It's so close. It's so close to being good. Let me click this node though. There she is. Let's see if I can get this one. There's two of them. One that's made. Helps if I take off D&D. He spent money on it, so he's going to want to... Yeah, this is a crazy bow. I'll wear this bow over Doom Fletcher's Prism, and then we'll just go full dex. Like, that's it. I don't know what to say. It's BLS Dex Edition. We. This is one, two, three, four, five. Suffix, 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 prefix, prefix. You could craft wet on it still. Sure. You never know. This you would have to do a little bit of work to. All right, so. I could buy a Highland level thicket bow. Let's see. Let's see what Ziz wants here. A little bit of crafting. So let's see, let's compare the build. So Doom Fletcher's Prism is a cheap way you can do this. Uh, you can also use... What, let's go through some bows that you can use with Hiri's Ire. Whoops, not Peewee.Trio. Unique bows. Peewee. Let's see what these guys got to say. Oh, man. God, so good. He did it five times, damn. I like this. I like theorycraft bows, man. It's something different. I want to reroll stuff to use thirty percent more. Alright, let's see what else we can stack here. Iron Commander, I know someone's gonna say in the YouTube comments, like, sorry guys, Iron Commander is... Go for it. I'm not doing it. Tomb Fist. One six, uh, one one sixty C. All right, let's see. Hope Shredder, you could do something with this too. You get cold damage for frenzy charge. It's not a bad item to use with this. You get movement speed for a frenzy charge. You have to deal with the degen, but you can run it as a trapper. So if you're playing a saboteur, Hope Shredder is pretty good. You get that regen for throwing uh, traps, or excuse me, for traps blowing up, and you get your regen for detonating mines. So that helps counter out the these, the downside of Hope Shredder. You could try something like that. Chin Soul will be good eventually, obviously. We'll go the fire version when we go Chin Soul. We'll go like uh, Chieftain. This is all next league stuff. So Wind Ripper. Wind Ripper is just insane. I don't know what else I could say. This is, if you want to be lazy and you want to go Wind Ripper, here is Demise. It's just good. 
Voltaxic Rift. If you were to go a full int version of Hiri's Demise, and somehow, some way, like, I guess as a guardian, that int becomes mana, you could do, like, CI with it, go Incandescent Heart, get extra of your elemental damage. Before the conversion, you'll get a lot of chaos. Pretty good. Of course, Breath of the Council. Arbrix is pretty good with this. Setup 2. Physical bows with hybrid elemental damage is not bad. Bows are bows. Bows could scale anything. So I think I'm going to stick with Prism for now. Tempest isn't bad if you want to go pure uh, int. You get all that lightning damage. And Tempest gives you 1.95. I mean, with all of that lightning damage, pretty strong. You would have to go probably... Let's see... If we were to go the Tempest with Hiri's Eye, we'd probably be CI and we'd focus on this side of the tree and we would go crit. Hmm. I think I'm going to stick with Doomfletch's Prism for now, though. I whispered that one dude who was in maps didn't respond to me. Let me whisper him again. That's all I really got, YouTube. So Hiri's Demise, I'm going to try it out next league. And coming up soon, you'll see the... Well, actually, I'm going to start leveling it today, probably. The Hiri's Demise Ascendant. Instead of running it back, Brutus's Lead Sprinkler, this is my intermission build. I've done 10 Brutus's Lead Sprinkler now, 9.5 if you want to count like two half levels. Two of them didn't make it to maps. One hasn't leveled yet and the other one died pre-maps. So I'm about that halfway point on every single Ascendancy. Damn, this dude's charging more than Ziz. That's more than Ziz and his is high level 86. Oh me. Golden dreams in your eyes. Like, yo! He could try, but he ain't going nowhere. And it's not even item level 70. The one I whispered for was like 72 or something, 74. It wasn't not in 80, 86. So, crafting one of those is going to be pretty tricky. Let me put this up. We're not playing BLS. Get this son of a gun out of here. We're taking a break. Alright, guys. Elemental hit. Doom Fletch's Prism. We'll see how long I play Ellie Hit before I switch it out or if I don't. We're going full elemental attribute scaling randomness. And I'll try and craft a thicket later on. And we could keep the Ellie Hit. Okay, dude. You could think that all he wants. That's all I got to say. I'm Zeno. Thanks for tuning in. And you can come to my live stream to check out this build that we just theoried. Haven't started it yet. I know some people prefer gameplay first, then talking. It says theory on the thumbnail which means that this is a theory craft discussion when it says without the theory i will say guide or nothing or lab run there you go but for theory craft sessions we just talk game we talk attributes we talk that's just it for guides we will be more gameplay oriented sometimes i do one in the same but i really wanted to hash out these ideas thanks for watching i'll see you all later